Hello everyone. Many students feel that the act of writing lecture notes involves just jotting down very quickly whatever the teacher says or writes and then going back home or to their rooms and then studying them. But actually proper and effective lecture notes, making lecture notes goes far beyond this. So there are broadly two different categories of mistakes which students can make while making lecture notes. Some of these are during the lectures and some of these are after the lectures. And please do not think that I'm going to discuss the obvious thing uh, regarding the after the lectures thing, like you are not studying from the lectures. So it's not going to be so obvious and boring. So let me come to it. So first of all, the category of mistakes that you can make during lectures. So the first and one of the biggest mistakes, probably the biggest mistake which a student can make is not to understand what type of lecture notes to make in what kind of lectures because there are different kinds of lectures and the type of lecture notes that you need to make depends on that type of lecture content so for example on the one hand some lectures are of the kind which involves a heavy amount of explanation from the teacher or the professor so uh, developing your understanding fully absorbing the explanation in these kinds of lectures is of paramount importance rather than actually writing this down. This is backed by proper research and you can read up about it in a very nice book, Outsmart Your Brain by Professor Daniel Willingham. He is a cognitive scientist as well as he is very heavily involved in educational research. So it is very uh, backed by research that you need to understand in these kinds of lectures what is being discussed rather than writing verbatim what is uh, what the teacher is saying because if you just jot it down it is not really making a mark in your brain so please do not make this this grave grave mistake okay under try to understand try to grasp the meaning and in your own words try to paraphrase what the teacher is saying what the professor is saying and jot it down okay in your own words this is very very important please do not copy it verbatim this does not really help you this may, be a, this may sound a little bit uh, non-intuitive to you, but it is true. Now, uh, there's another kind of lectures where the details are important. So in these kinds of lectures, you really have to capture the details. So write as fast as you can and try to capture everything that the teacher is telling you or writing on the board. In some kinds of lectures where the teachers uh, share the lecture notes from themselves or their slides, you may fall into a temptation of not writing uh, in class, uh, taking down the lecture notes, but please again do not make this mistake. Try as far as possible to capture in your own hand the uh, all the details which are being discussed in class. Uh, the, the reason here is that, well sure, the slides will be there, the lecture notes will be there from the professor, from the teacher, but your learning should start from the classroom itself. When you write in your own hands, it creates a mark in your brain. It creates certain pathways, certain neuronal pathways, which um, can get reinforced during the revision stage. So let the learnings begin in proper earnest in the classroom itself. Furthermore, if you're taking the lecture notes by hand, the full details, you can also highlight certain things which the teacher or the professor is trying to emphasize. So this is very, very important. Now there is another kind of lecture notes where the where it is very much derivation heavy. So there's lots of derivations, proof kind of things are there. In that kind of lecture, you have to do both. So you have to understand as well as you have to write. So these two things must go hand in hand. Now. Uh, in this context, uh, if the teacher encourages some kind of interaction, then make it a point to resolve your doubts then and there in the classroom itself. This is a very grave mistake in the process of lecture making lecture notes that you are just scribbling something down and uh, you are losing out on the opportunities which are being given by the teacher or the professor of getting your doubts resolved. So when he asks, the simple question, do you have any doubts, raise your hand and ask it. In certain other kinds of lectures, maybe the teacher is not that interactive. In that case, make a mark. Make a mark through a question mark or something, some mark which will uh, fall easily in, on your eyes, 
later on so that you can get it resolved later. So this is a very important point and we'll come back to it later also. Now in this context of making marks, one of the biggest mistakes which students make is to not use some kind of shorthand and special symbols within their things. First of all, you have to keep a decent amount of margin. So these are getting getting down into the nuts and bolts details of lecture, of taking down the lecture notes. So you have to keep certain margins at the sides. And at certain critical places, you have to put some marks. For example, in the process of the discussion, the explanation, the teacher highlights something. There is a key insight that he delivers. Mark that as a key insight from the professor. Maybe you write a P and put a circle around it. Sometimes in the process of concentrating hard, what happens is that certain key insights pop up in your own brain. So from your side, what you can do is you can write M for my insight and then put a mark around it. So later on when you are revising, this will be, uh, this kind of a thought will be triggered again in your brain and uh, it'll help in a better understanding of the topic. Uh, in a similar fashion, you can use some other kinds of marks. For example, if you miss something, put a question mark there or some other symbol. Suppose something is confusing to you. So write that as a double question mark or a question mark with an exclamation so that you need to revisit this. Uh, this I've already pointed out earlier. Uh, plus you can use some very uh, interesting uh, shorthands also. For example, things like change. Suppose you are in the midst of writing furiously at a furious pace and you don't have time to write down all the words. You do not actually have to write down the words. You can condense the things, use proper abbreviations and jot down in a, in a clever way. For example, the word change. You do not have to write C-H-A-N-G. You can write something like a delta because delta denotes change. Next, you can write something like for uh, for increase, magnify, for these kinds of things, you can use an up arrow symbol. For decrease, you can use a down arrow symbol. For things like it leads to, or it implies right and uh, right, uh, use a right arrow symbol or an implies sign. So these are the small, small things which you can, uh, you can, you can develop. This, this system you can develop on your own, which is something unique to you. This is not the official shorthand, the Pitman shorthand which people use, it's not that. Uh, it is your own shorthand, your own symbol of abbreviations and symbols. Follow this uniformly across your different lectures. And as you grow older, this will be so much ingrained in your brain that you don't even have to think about it using them. Now, regarding uh, leaving a decent amount of margin. So when you are uh, revising your uh, notes later on, leaving the margins at the sides will uh, will allow you to make some notes in those margins. So if you leave a sufficient gap, it will ha you'll have the space to write down those notes for later on. Now, regarding recordings, lecture recordings, many of you feel that if the le lecture recordings are available, why should I even bother taking the notes? But this is the biggest mistake, okay, in the sense that this is the biggest lie that you tell yourself that I will watch the lectures later on. What happens is that you will probably watch the le lectures later on, but you are probably going to binge watch them. So binge watching lectures uh, doesn't really help you. You have to space out the things. If you really want to understand something in an effective fashion and which gets ingrained in your brain in a long term fashion, then you have to space it out. And remember that uh, suppose uh, you are actually learning something from a YouTube video and maybe you're going through some kind of an NPTEL lecture or maybe you're going through your JE preparation from some uh, YouTube teachers. So in that case also it becomes especially important that you take notes. You have the luxury of pausing the video and taking down notes, do that, okay? F try to pretend as if the teacher is in front of you and have the extra added luxury of pausing the thing and taking down the notes properly. So remember, that if you have to revise by coming back to the video lectures and you have to watch the video lecture again, this is a huge, huge uh, tax on your time. This is a huge investment of time. Watching the video lectures once is taxing enough. Just remember that, I mean, just think about doing it all over again. So 
if you have to revise it by going through it all over again even if at maybe 1.5x speed or 1.75x speed it is still taxing so take down your notes it will be much faster that way all right so this was mostly about the things the mistakes that you make during lectures what about after lectures so as i said regarding after lectures i'm not going to say that the biggest mistake that you are going to make that you that students make is not studying them although that is a big mistake but i'm not going to discuss that so this is something else what i want to discuss here is that after you have made the lectures and before you actually start studying them and preparing them for exams preparing from them uh, for your exams there is an intermediate step and that intermediate step is where you look over your notes and you reorganize them what i mean by that i mean that so during the actual process of writing down your lecture notes during class you were probably doing it such a furious pace you were f- your mind was fully engaged in the act of writing itself or you were fully engaged in the act of understanding from the teacher paraphrasing them and writing down not writing down the important points in your own language so your mind was fully occupied with these activities and the overall structure of the lectures across the various topics and the underlying connections between them you probably did not get so this is the time during this intermediate step when you go over your lectures you're not really studying okay you're not actually i mean memorizing anything or not any uh, actually solving the problems but you are just going through the overall structure and trying to get a sense of the underlying connections this is a very very important intermediate step and you may feel that you are not really studying what are you even doing your brain can actually cheat you into thinking that you're not really doing anything useful but you are actually doing something very very useful and this is not just in terms of getting a deeper understanding of what you have written down which is which is definitely so but also the uh, getting a sense of these kinds of uh, underlying connections across the different topics and getting a sense of the overall structure it can help you to actually memorize the things which you have written so when you have a a kind of understanding of the overall thing not as disparate topics but as a connected whole as a cohesive whole it definitely helps you in understanding as well as in memorizing them and what does it entail what do you have to actually do the mechanics of it so you have to sit down open up your notes just glance through them in a very relaxed fashion and then what you have to do is to create some kind of a tree structure like this topic is connected with that topic make boxes around them or put circles around them and connect them through arrows through curved arrows or whatever whatever uh fancies you you make these connections and write that how this topic is connected with that topic how this concept is connected with that concept this kind of a tree or if if you want to call it a mind map or whatever you want to call it but make this kind of a graphical representation of these kinds of connections across the different topics this is something which i solely missed during my own student days next remember i had mentioned earlier that during the course of making lecture notes uh, maybe if the teacher is not very interactive uh, or perhaps if you are taking it down from some kind of youtube videos uh, some points were left unresolved so this is the time where you have to this intermediate step this is the time when you have when you can actually go through these unresolved points approach your friends perhaps they have understood it or even better you can approach some teacher of course in the case of youtube videos you cannot do that but in an actual lecture video where you have an actual instructor to approach you can actually approach them but mind you always approach them not with some generic questions so, okay i have not understood the concept of uh, of something like uh, newton second law or i have not understood the concept of trusses not like that okay it has to be more focused than that what exactly have you tried and what exactly is your doubt okay so try to approach your instructor in that fashion you know you know with focused be prepared with focused questions this is my advice to you finally don't waste your time trying to beautify your notes many students have this habit of really rewriting their notes uh, all throughout uh, using different colored ink 
you know, putting nice uh, graphical representations, beautiful connections, all these kinds of things. I mean, if it really gives you pleasure, uh, go for it. There are certainly worse ways of wasting your time, but in all likelihood, you are not going to get benefited from these kinds of exercise. Rather, you should remember that your lecture notes should be a very, very functional, a very usable compilation of the key insights, the explanations and the understandings which the teacher has provided to you, as well as very, very importantly, the insights which you have gathered yourself. And uh, I have to add this as an engineering professor myself, that when you are in the process of solving problems, there are definitely going to be some extra key insights which will pop into your mind and you have to not note it back in your lecture notes. So when you embed them in your lecture notes later on when you are revising them, those are the key points which will get imprinted in your mind and it will be really, really helpful for your preparation. Finally, if you do all of these things, whatever we ha I've discussed here, I am sure that it will help you to not only be well prepared for uh, your examination, but it will actually help you in understanding and learning the concepts of the various topics in such a fashion that you will not forget them in a long, long time. So that will be your genuine preparation towards, uh, towards gaining proper expertise. Okay, so with that, uh, I'll end this video. If you have any comments, some extra tips that you want to share with others, please do write uh, and uh, help others. So thank you very much. All the very best.